Whew, new season. Let's take a look at what we have. We got Attack on Titan, Final Season, Part 3, Part Pi to the Square Root of 12. Obviously, going to watch the finale. Ooh, and we have another season of the Spy Family. That's always good. We also have a new Isekai. Not a huge fan of Isekai, but there's plenty of other shows. Oh, we have another Isekai? Is that a fucking pig? And we have another Isekai. Yeah, I take back what I said. Like, who, who's asking for all these isekais? I'm so sick of this oversaturated genre that keeps repeating the same story over and over again. And honestly, it's ruining the entire fantasy genre for me. Like, like what is this one? Firin? 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 Oh. I don't tend to watch a lot of fantasy anime because, let's be honest, most of them are exactly like an isekai minus the reincarnation. There's always a demon lord they have to beat, maybe there's a harem, our MC is overpowered, it's all the same. The only interesting part of these stories is their ridiculous titles but even then they get pretty stale and boring. And I'm not saying that every fantasy or isekai is like this because there's plenty that are absolutely stunning. It's just that within that abundance, there's a lot of shit. Like, a lot. But there's always that one fantasy every blue moon that reminds me of how beautiful this genre can be. And this time it happened to be Freerun. Freerun's story is a much more sentimental one. Our main party has already defeated the demon lord and this new journey takes place decades after everyone's prime. That is, everyone but Freerun's. This party encompasses only four members. Two humans named Hyther and Himmel, the dwarf warrior Aizen, and an elf named Freerun. And this diverse party spends an entire decade traveling with each other. Now, 10 years is a very long time. I don't even know what I'm going to eat tonight, let alone where I'm going to be the next week. But I can only say that from the perspective of being a human and that's because 10 years is about one seventh of our entire lifespan. So my definition of a long time is always going to be biased towards that. Freerun on the other hand is an elf, which means that she's gonna live through multiple millennia. So if we perceive 10 years to her eyes that one seventh now becomes less than 1% of her time. During the first few scenes of the premiere, Freerun kind of comes off as an ass. She doesn't seem to care about anything, she seems very indifferent about relationships, but to some extent, this is understandable. You can't expect anyone to value something that's less than 1% of your time. And it's very ironic because time is something that Freerun has a lot of, and so she should be able to use that time to find that value, right? Well, not exactly. In Freeman's life, everyone and everything gets older while she remains the same. And it's very frustrating, it's upsetting for her because everyone dies before she gets the chance to exchange some sort of value, which is why she prefers to spend most of her time alone. There's no point in getting to know someone that's only going to be part of 1% of your life. As Himmel, Heiter, and even Aizen age over time, they often reminisce on their 10 year journey together. Looking back at all the fond memories they made, all the stupid shit that they did, to them, those 10 years were the most overriding moments of their entire lives. It was the most exciting, it was the most thrilling, and it was the time where they felt the most alive. But for Freerun, she just shrugs that off like it happened yesterday. She even left on a 50 year journey after the big celebration thinking that she could just come back whenever she wanted to and nothing would change. Her perception of time isn't as valuable as it is to us. Her definition of a long time is something that none of us can truly understand. And, and to put this into comparison, I asked a couple of my friends a simple question. How long is too long? And to my surprise, the majority of them gave me increments of hours. I had someone tell me that one hour was a long time, another tell me that five hours was too long, and I only had one person give me a measurement in years. Nonetheless, none of them were even close to considering the possibility of decades being a long time because it was that far-fetched of a time. So when Freerun comes back from her 50 year journey, there's a big realization for her. She's been selfish. She's been very self-centered of her time. And, and I know what you might be thinking, how can someone be selfish with their time? I mean, time is one of the few things that you should be greedy with. 
It's the utensil we're given in order to illustrate how we want to live. If we're not selfish with it, I don't think it would be possible to experience the gift of living. Time is very limited. As soon as we run out, that's it. And there's this common understanding that the worst thing you could do to someone is waste their time. But as weird as it sounds, I think time spent selfishly can be just as sour as wasting someone else's time. And Freerin is the perfect example of this. Freerin is an elf that can live thousands of years, meaning that she has an eternity of a lifespan compared to the rest of her comrades. And just like all of our lives, Freerin has selfish things she wants to do. She wants to collect all the magic spells, journey by herself, and continue being the best mage possible. And there's nothing inherently wrong with this. Freerin has a selfish goal, and she chooses to use her time to work towards it, something we can all relate to. But Freerin realizes something that a lot of people fail to understand. A life that's spent entirely under one perspective is miserable. And, and what I mean by that is not only should you value your time, but you should consider how your time could affect those around you. And that's because whether you want it or not, other people's time will overlap with yours. And that overlap might mean a lot more to someone else than it is to you. And for Heiter, Himmel, and Aizen, their overlap with Freerin meant a lot more than just a mere 10 years. Just like how Freerin wants to spend her extensive time learning spells, Himmel and the rest of the party wants to be selfish of Freerin with the little time they have. I love how realistic and beautiful Freerin Beyond's Journey's End is able to illustrate this, showing time as an overlap and then as a divergence of two opposite directions, leaving a very regretful outcome. It's hard to balance time. You have aspirations you want to spend time on, relationships you want to develop, this and that. So it's definitely a lot easier to just ignore all of that and cut everything off to just focus on yourself. But then you miss, and I know this is going to be corny, but you know, the smaller things. It's those smaller things that you can use to build up something that you can value and cherish beyond anything you could have ever imagined. As long as you recognize its importance and give it your time, that value will form. And I think there's something very special about that. Uh, hey, I just wanted to thank everyone for the support I've gotten over the last few months. YouTube has been really fun for me. I enjoy scripting and editing, sometimes. And of course, there's lots of room for improvement, and I'm slowly doing that, I hope. But I've received a lot of kind messages, so I just want to say thank you.